Well, thank you for joining us. This is new video just into our newsroom of significant flooding in the Duluth area. Heavy rain this weekend led to creeks overflowing. And of course, that led to basements and garages filling up with water. This is the same storm system that is expected to clip the Twin Cities again this afternoon. Ben Derry's here with more on what we can expect as we head out the door today. Hi, Ben. Hi, Rena. Uh, yeah, it is once again on the wetter side. It seems like we haven't had uh, back to back to back rainy days in a while, but that's exactly what we're dealing with today. And additional rain is in the forecast later this afternoon and evening, and even a couple of rumbles of thunder are possible as well. Let's take another look at radar. You can see the same storm system is bringing widespread showers and even a few garden variety thunderstorms. Let's zoom in. You can see uh, northern parts of Dakota County over the Lakeville area, seeing a couple of isolated thunderstorms. Uh, nothing severe is expected, but don't be surprised to hear a couple rumbles this afternoon, maybe even some small pea sized hail within some of those larger cells. Right now it's 64 degrees. The thermometer is not going to move very much today. And again, on again, off again, rain showers are expected through the afternoon and a couple of rumbles of thunder are expected as well. We do expect drier weather in the days ahead and we might not be done with 80 degrees yet this year. We'll talk about a nice warming trend heading into next weekend coming up. Rena. All right. Thank you, Ben. And be sure to download the Care 11 weather app. You can get personalized forecasts, weather alerts and check the live radar anytime. And of course, it is free in any app store. Right now, more than 100 volunteers are searching for clues that will hopefully help bring a missing Bemidji team home. Nevea Kingbird was just 15 years old when she disappeared in 2021. Tribal, state and federal authorities are working with the Minnesota Missing and Murdered Indigenous Relatives Office in this search. They do hope to canvas more than 150 acres in the next two days. In less than two hours, a man charged in a Minneapolis crash that killed five young women is expected back in court. Today, a judge will determine whether there's enough evidence to bring the case against Derek Thompson to trial. Prosecutors say Thompson was driving at 100 miles per hour in June when he crashed into the car carrying the five women. They also say he was under the influence. And according to the criminal complaint, police found a loaded pistol and a large amount of drugs in the rental car that Thompson was driving. There's an investigation happening now in Roseville after three men were found dead and another was seriously, seriously hurt over the weekend. Police say they got a call from one of the men inside an apartment near Eldridge and Fry early Saturday morning. That's when they found the bodies of three men with knife and gunshot wounds. Another man was cut on his neck. Right now he is recovering in the hospital and is expected to live. Officers say the men did know each other, but they don't know exactly what led up to this incident. At 7 this morning, more gay men in the Twin Cities became eligible to donate blood. Today, Memorial Blood Centers changed its screening process for donors. Now most people can donate regardless of their sexuality or gender identity. In 1983, the HIV and AIDS epidemic led to the government banning gay men from donating blood. Today, Memorial Blood Center says new evidence shows it is safe to welcome in the new donors. This is based on scientific studies done by the Department of Health and uh, based on information from other countries who've already adopted this. Anyone who has ever tested positive for HIV is still permanently banned from donating blood. Earlier this month, Memorial Blood Centers told us that it is well below its five to seven day supply of donations currently. Well, good sign in Hollywood today after reports say the writers and studios came to a deal overnight. They say the Writers Guild of America agreed to a tentative three year deal with the organization representing studios and streamers. We don't know the exact details of the deal and won't know until it's officially approved. But uh, experts say that it does include higher residuals, higher wages and artificial intelligence restrictions. From day one, we've been hopeful that a deal will be reached because, you know, they're our partners and we love making television with them. Writers won't head back to work until the final contract is signed and voted on. Daytime and late night talk shows are expected to be the first to start back up. Experts say we should not expect any new scripted shows until sometime next year. President Biden is expected to visit picketers in the United Auto Workers strike. There are 38 plants and facilities involved, including one here in Plymouth and one in Hudson, Wisconsin. Biden is expected to walk the line in Michigan tomorrow. So far, the expanded strike only involves GM and Stellantis. The UAW president said the union will not initiate additional strikes at Ford facilities because he says Ford has proven it is serious about reaching a deal. Checking a live look at a quiet Capitol Hill, lawmakers have the day off, but when they come back tomorrow, they'll have just five days to come up with a spending deal. Now, if that does not happen, the government will shut down. John Loring shows us how the impact could grow. 
Congress has until Saturday to make a deal to keep the government funded, but members from both parties aren't feeling optimistic. If we have a government shutdown, which I'm sad to say at this point looks likely, it will be because there are a couple dozen Republican members at least who want a government shutdown. GOP Rep Tim Burchett of Tennessee is among those holding his ground. The American public knows what we're up to and they're sick and tired of it. That's why folks like me, I'm, you know, we're sticking to our guns and all of a sudden we're the bad guys because we want to balance our budget. Should the shutdown occur, nearly 4 million federal employees will be affected immediately, including the non-essential workers being furloughed until the shutdown is over. It would also have a snowball effect across the U.S., including the Bureau of Labor Statistics not releasing financial data, which would make it hard for the Federal Reserve and investors to figure out the economy. And the White House says travel will be affected as well by air traffic controllers and TSA workers not getting paid to work. While there are discussions about how to keep things running. Let's pass a 30 to 60 day continuing resolution. Let's make sure it's not loaded up. It appears to be an uphill battle. You can't keep spending $7 trillion when you're only taking in $5 trillion. That just doesn't work. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Today, Americans have another chance to get a, another round of free COVID tests. The Biden administration is reopening the at-home testing program as COVID hospitalizations begin to rise again. You can order four tests now from covidtests.gov. Also new today, the Biden administration says it will allocate $1 billion in funding for rail infrastructure. It follows a series of railway emergencies, including a toxic derailment in Ohio. The money will go to 70 different projects in 35 states. More than $2.5 million will come here to Minnesota. Most of that funding will be allocated to the Twin Cities and Western Railroad Company to improve safety. A half million dollars will go to Minnesota Valley Regional Rail Authority. Taking a look at our gas prices today, where we're starting to see a little bit of relief. AAA shows the average price in Minnesota is 385. That is about the same as the national average and down about nine cents from last Monday.